Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're digging into something that used to be huge in the iOS scene, jailbreaking. We're going to cover a couple things like the history of jailbreaks, what still works here in 2025, why iOS 17 seems locked down, and we're going to test this out for ourselves on our 12 Pro Max running iOS 17. Stick around, because this walkthrough might surprise you. Let's take a second and rewind. Back in the day, I'm talking iOS 4, 6 era, jailbreaking was everything. You could theme your UI, add widgets before Apple even allowed them, play emulators, spoof your GPS, run full file explorers. It was total freedom. Popular tools include Jailbreak Me, done through Safari, Red Snow, an early CLI tool, command line interface, Pangu and Taiji, hopefully I said those right, these are legendary Chinese teams. And Checkrain, the final boss of semi-tethered jailbreaks based on the unpatchable Checkmate exploit. Now there are probably a couple more out there that I didn't cover, but they pretty much all do the same thing. Now, unfortunately, Apple did learn and they seemed to harden their OS and just change how these things work. But the good thing is they did add native features, dark mode, widgets, screen recording, but it just made it harder for these quote unquote hackers to jailbreak the device. And now here on iOS 26, we're actually going to go back to 17 because that's what we're running. There is no jailbreak for iPhones, but iPad OS 17, there is some hope. Developers are experimenting with partial jailbreaks on select iPads, but here's the kicker. Just because you can't jailbreak doesn't mean you're locked out. We have other tools like Alt Store, Sideloadly, and Files Escape still give you some customization through sideloaded apps. So today we're going to test how far we can get on iOS 17. Now before we start our hands-on testing, here under the iOS 17 Uncovered Jailbreak GitHub page, it has pretty much all the information we're going to need in regards of the latest iOS 18, 18.5 beta information with jailbreak, even though we're on iOS 26 by now. It's still fresh, so there's not too much detail and information into it. So we're just going to stick with iOS 17 for diving into it, as well as taking a look at a couple things in iOS 18, even though I don't have iOS 18 on our iPhone. So here for the uncovered jailbreak guide, we have iOS 18.1, 18.5 beta compatibility. Now we can install uncovered jailbreak through eSign, Troll Store, Alt Store, Side Loadly, and jailbreak on iPad or iPhone. OS 12 to 14.8, and then iOS 17 to 17.6.1, iOS 18-18.1, compatibility and jailbreak solutions. Now we're gonna quickly continue reading this, but it just means we have to look into the jailbreak solutions for iOS 17 and 18. Now when it comes to the older OSs, we would have to use the IPA file for actually jailbreaking the older A12 and A13 iPhones running iOS 14.6 to 14.8, or an iPhone XS running iOS 14.6 to 14.8. Now with newer style of iOSs, it's more on lockdown. The good news is because there is a bigger community now and a lot more tools, you can actually check to see if your device is easily hackable. For example, we now have the uncover compatibility for iOS 18.5, 17.71 to iOS 15, 11 for free as the AI jailbreak finder app pretty much takes us to the ipa.zjb.com slash jailbreak website now with this I would recommend running this through your iPhone itself rather than just the mobile but that's what we're looking on right now now we can select our model we have the 12 pro max and we're running iOS 17.1.2 hit find jailbreak and According to this, there are no jailbreak solutions found for the tools. And then if we drop down to iOS 15, we can see that we have some jailbreak tools. Now, fair warning, if you're Googling jailbreak tools, beware, like 99% of the untethered jailbreak iOS sites are actually fake. If they ask you to complete a survey or install sketchy profiles, don't do that. Stick to more known services like 
altstore.io, GitHub devs like Opa334 and Coolstar, and jailbreak Reddit and Discord groups. Now, even without a full jailbreak, there are cool things you can do. More emulation, Dolphini OS, GameCube emulator, YouTube Plus, which is YouTube Plus Plus style tweaks, Jitterbug, Troll Tools, basic icon theming. Now, the thing is, you need to re sign apps every seven days with your Apple ID and use Sideloadly if AltStore doesn't support something you want. Now, I'm going to briefly go into why this is possible and how it's a little bit different. So, those tools that I spoke about earlier, we're going to take a look at Pengu first and then Red Snow to just give some insight of how jailbreaking used to be. And then we're going to take a look at what we can do now. So this is the Pangu jailbreak website for iOS 9.2 to 9.3.3. Now these jailbreaks for Pangu used to be pretty simple. You would download the tool, plug in your device and run through the jailbreak. It would actually jailbreak the device without having to reinstall the entire OS. If we were to use something like Red Snow, on the other hand, this is the very, very old generation of jailbreaking. Now, I know I'm kind of going out of order with this. Now to get some insight into how I remember Red Snow used to work, could be wrong, but you used to be able to have to plug in your device, reinstall the iOS and use this jailbreak tool at the same time. So it would reinstall the firmware and add the jailbreak features on top of that. If anything went wrong, unfortunately, you would have to start from the beginning with a fresh device. More recent versions of jailbreaking, you would actually install an IPSW. I believe that's the acronym for the iOS firmware that you would install through iTunes. Pretty much just doing a restore, but using a custom firmware. And then a lot of these newer style jailbreaks like Pengu, pretty much put the application on your device through side loading. And then one more thing we're going to take a look at, even though we already spoke about it, is a good old way of jailbreak me. So just like how Red Snow used to be, jailbreak me was the same way you would have to restore your iPhone, iPad, or iPod touch using iTunes. You just have to use that custom firmware image. Now check rain on the other hand, I haven't actually installed any jailbreaks using CheckRain, but I believe this is just as simple as plugging your device and running it through their tool to just sideload it. But I know CheckRain is in more jailbreaking fixes for iOS devices rather than limiting it to just iPhones. And I know I pretty much butchered what CheckRain is all about, but that's what they have. Good jailbreak tools. Now hopping back over to the GitHub page, here we can see that we are limited in jailbreaking to iOS 14 and 14.5 on these devices. I believe we can also do iOS 15, but that is the latest that we can go. Anything iOS 16, 17, and now 18, as well as technically now 26, but 26 hasn't actually been looked into yet. Now it means there's nothing we can do, or is there? Now I know I'm pretty much repeating myself at this point, but when it comes to modern looks into jailbreaking, we're not actually jailbreaking our devices like we used to. We're actually going to be installing alternative app stores on our device, pretty much sideloading any apps signed by our own Apple ID rather than any other Apple IDs that would sign these apps, if that makes sense. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of applications and then we'll get to installing them on a device. This part we're going to be doing a quick tutorial and then we'll take a look at them on our device and see how it holds up to this day. Now there are plenty to choose from like Tutu app, Alt Store. Supposedly there's a way to get Cydia downloaded. Doesn't seem like it's a reputable source though. Seems like it's just some sketchy app, but we'll take a look at it and a couple other things. Some of these we're going to install on a device to take a look at. Others we're just going to mention and show because they have a similar process when it comes to this. So we're going to grab our iPhone and get to installing. Quick disclaimer, watch the entire video to see the applications we go through to see if you should or should not download it on your device. Now, I'm not recommending any of these applications to be downloaded. It's always best to do your research beforehand and see about adding these applications to your device. 
This review tutorial is for educational purpose only. I'm not responsible if you break your device or if your device becomes infected or anything by malicious software. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, first things first for hardware, we just need a computer running Linux, Mac OS, Windows, kind of doesn't matter. You just need to be able to install the sideload application server, depending on which app we're installing. We're gonna start up with Alt Store, so we'll get into that later. You're also gonna need to install iTunes and iCloud. Links to these will be down in the description below. Don't forget your device of choice and a USB cable for it. All right, so let's quickly install iTunes and iCloud. And then we'll get into installing alt server and sideload it onto our device. Now the process may look like it's a bit out of order. We're going to start out with iTunes where you're going to download that. Links to these will be down in the description below. You can do the same process with iCloud or if you download the alt store server, you can actually download iCloud from there as well. Now to get iTunes downloaded, Apple's always going to say get it from Microsoft and it's going to open up the Microsoft Store. You actually don't want to download this version of iTunes as it's not going to work with our side loading apps or app stores. Instead, download the basic version of iTunes by going back to the Apple website, scrolling down, hit Windows, and hit download iTunes for Windows 64-bit if you're running 64-bit or 32-bit, hit here. And then once it finishes downloading, all you need to do is run through the iTunes setup process and then pretty much do the same, but with iCloud. All right, now with all of our pre-applications installed, let's go ahead and go to altstore.io and download the altstore server. On the altstore website, hit get altstore. And then if you're running a macOS device, hit altstore macOS. If you're running on a Windows device, hit Alt Store Windows. And if you happen to be in the European Union, hit Alt Store PAL and hit Download. Now I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be running Alt Store of Windows. I'm going to wait for the installer to finish. Now that it's done, I'm just going to extract the Alt Store installer and setup, run through the setup. Now, just for any of these applications that we will be installing and running on our iPhone device, you do have to be careful as you are installing third-party applications on your device as well as your PC if you're installing these through your PC. Alt Store is finished, so we need to run the Alt Server. Now, with Alt Server installed, if you don't have iTunes or iCloud installed, it's going to bring up this page to actually download those applications. Again, make sure they're already installed. If it still doesn't come up and they've already been installed, try giving it a reboot. And if anything, just let me know down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to assist. All right, now that everything's installed, open up Alt Server. It's not gonna open up anything, it's just gonna sit in our system tray. And then plug your device in and accept it to be used on your system. Now, if it doesn't pop up, just open up iTunes to take a look to see if the device is actually recognized. If it's not, give it a minute or two, try another USB cable. iTunes may take a minute to actually install that USB device. And our device may request to trust this device. Now, after a bit, I just opened up iTunes to make sure our device is recognized, and it is. So we're going to close out of iTunes, go to our system tray, right or left click on the alt server application, click install alt store, and click on the device that's plugged in. And here it's requesting you to enter your Apple ID and password. Due to some server changes, app specific passwords no longer work. Please use your normal password instead. It's just going to be sending your Apple ID and password to Apple for authentication pretty much signing the application with your Apple credentials. Then it's going to ask you for a six digit verification code sent to your Apple device. Just type that in and then hit submit. Now it is installing Alt Store to our device. It may take a little bit of time to actually pop on our device. All right, now that we can see that the app is on our device, we need to enable developer mode. We can do this by going to settings, scrolling down until you see privacy and security. Inside here, scroll all the way down until you see developer mode, click on that, and then enable it. It may ask you to type in your password. Now it's going to request a restart of our device. Hit restart. 
After rebooting our device, it's going to request us to turn on developer mode. Hit yes, type in your password if needed. And now we can get into the alt store. All right, here in alt store, we can see that there's a lot we can get like the Game Boy Advance emulator called Delta. Unfortunately, you will need to type in your Apple ID to actually download these sideloaded apps, but it's kind of a one-stop shop when it comes to these. Now, if you have any issues within the app, go back in settings, find general, go to VPN and device management, and the alt store should be in here. Now, if it's not here under profile, you will need to re sideload the application through the alt server. Now let's move on to downloading the Scarlet App Store. Now real quick, the video is getting quite long, so I'm not going to go through the entire installation process for the Scarlet iOS Store. So you're just going to do the same steps similar to Alt Store. Go to the website, click download now, and you're going to download the server and install it pretty much similarly to the Alt Store. Now there is a way to actually install the IPA through an alternative store as well. They use Troll Store or even Alt Store. So you don't actually have to set it up that way. You can always just use the newly installed Alt Store as well. To install it this way, just click download via Alt Store on your device and it will open it that way. Now, one final thing I want to take a look at is the Cydia Free app. Now, if you go to CydiaFree.com, here we have our installation steps pretty much tell us how we need to go about installing the Cydia free app. All right, and here's the application. Pretty much seems like what I was thinking. It's one of those scam style applications that tell you you need to pay to access the modifications that Cydia can do. Cydia was always free. There was no reason to pay for it or need to pay for it now. So a lot of these free Cydia apps don't go and install them. They don't do anything. You're actually better off just doing alt store or any of the other trusted applications. So here's my honest take. The classic jailbreak as we knew it, installing Cydia, theming, springboard, running tweaks like Barrel is basically dead for now on modern iPhones. But this philosophy of jailbreaking lives in side load emulators, custom IPA builds, unofficial YouTube and social media clients, simple tweaks even without root. Will we see another untethered jailbreak for iPhones? Someday, maybe. But for now, we adapt, we sideload, and we explore. Thank you for sticking around for this long video, especially if you're an OG jailbreaker like me. If you got value from this video, give it a like, share it with your jailbreaking friends, and hit subscribe for iOS money content, sideloading tricks, and more if we decide to go that route. Comment down below, is jailbreaking dead or are we just in the off season? All links and tools are going to be in the description below. Until next time, keep tweaking, keep exploring, and I'll see you all in the next video.